The Federal Reserve effectively controls the economy, but without scrutiny. No other institution has so much unchecked power. The Fed demonstrated its unlimited authority during the pandemic. The Fed printed money, purchased government-backed securities, and doled out massive amounts of money to favored industries. The result added almost $5 trillion to the Fed's balance sheet, the largest in our history. When Dodd-Frank ordered a limited one-time audit of Fed actions, the Government Accountability Office uncovered that during the financial crisis, the Fed doled out over $16 trillion to domestic and foreign banks. This kind of inflationary bailout should not be kept secret from the public. While the Fed's easy money policies make the rich richer, the side effect is high inflation. As Milton Friedman famously explained, inflation is taxation without legislation. Congress cannot control the Fed's actions, but Fed actions can cost Americans dearly. Just ask any parent who has to feed his or her family during historically high inflation rates. My amendment would require a full audit of the Fed within one year. It is time for the Federal Reserve to operate in a manner that is transparent and accountable to the taxpayers. I ask for a yes vote. Senator from Ohio. Mr. President, I rise today to speak in opposition to the Paul Amendment. Members of both parties have always agreed an independent, underscore independent central bank is critical to a functioning economy. Congress put in place a restriction to shield the Fed's monetary policy from political influence. This longstanding restriction ensures that the Fed isn't subject to the whims of Congress, to the partisanship, to the nihilism, if I could use another word, of too often people in this body. Whether it's threatening a default or a government shutdown, all too common because of dysfunction uh, and uh, chaos in the House of Representatives, whether it's thre threatening a default or a government shutdown, we've already seen how partisanship so negatively impacts people's pocketbooks in the broader economy. We don't need it here, too. This amendment would make the Fed less effective. It would open it up to all kinds of nefarious political pressure. Congress already requires that the Fed undergo regular review of their operations, of their programs, of their balance sheet, of their financial statements. These are some of the ways Congress holds the Fed accountable while avoiding dangerous political interference. This amendment's irrelevant to what we we're voting on today, is yet another impediment to keeping our government open. It shouldn't be partisan, it shouldn't be political. Those antics should stay out of this debate. I urge my colleagues to vote no on the Paul Amendment, and I yield the floor.